Most of the time on this program, we focus on all things golf. And today we've got a little bit of golf in store for you, but we are also going to serve a much higher purpose as we've come together with a collection of patriots, heroes, and the family members left behind as we celebrate the Folds of Honor Foundation in a very special weekend at Treetops. Welcome to Michigan Golf Live Television, celebrating our 20th season of shining the spotlight on the best places to stay, play, and enjoy the greatest game on earth. Stay connected 24-7 to MGL on Facebook, Twitter, our weekly radio show, and podcasts on the all-new 4golfersnetwork.com. Hi, I'm Bill Hobson, and welcome to a very special edition of our program. As today we talk a little golf and a whole lot about our love of country. There is a gathering of patriots here, of family members representing the fallen, and of everybody coming together, really, for one primary reason. And that reason is... USA! 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 That's the story USA! of today's show. USA! 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 USA, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh, This Patriot Weekend at Treetops is a very special time, and it really, I know, means a lot to Kevin McKinley. So at the very outset of the program, why don't you explain to everybody what it is, and then we'll talk about the shootout in particular. Sure, yeah, the uh, Patriot Golf Day Weekend, um, really I was inspired to create it when I heard a speech by Dan Rooney, who's a fellow PGA professional like myself. Um, what I am not is a fighter pilot, and, uh, and Dan Rooney is, and, uh, so Dan did a few tours in Iraq and you know, so air support and, and such, but uh, really was, was convicted to create Folds of Honor and create Patriot Golf Day because of the Buckland family and the sacrifice that the Buckland family made. And um, you know, we've, we've met the Bucklands and what a, what a great family they are. And twin brothers, Brad and Brock, both went to serve and, and both answered the call uh, when they were deployed. And unfortunately, Brock didn't didn't make it home. And and when uh, Brock's body was coming home to his his hometown of Grand Rapids, Michigan, Dan Rooney happened to be on that flight, um, that commercial flight uh, from Chicago to, to Grand Rapids. Saw the the other side of war, and uh, really at that moment was was inspired to create Patriot Golf Day. And so I heard that speech. I grew up right down the road from Kent County Airport in, in Grand Rapids and uh, was inspired to reach out to the Buckland family myself and, and they're dear friends of ours now, um, you know, come to my, my kids' programs at school, they drive up from Grand Rapids, come to my kids' graduation and, mm -hmm. and so to me um, it, it's about families like that and I've been so blessed, you know, in the 13, 14 years that I've been doing this to meet a bunch of other families that have that just inspire me every year and here we are in 2021 and, and uh, I know that you know, there's some new people playing this year and I know that there's going to be people that are that are just going to inspire me right over again. So. And here we are 20 years after 9-11 
And this cause is something that has really caught the attention of the entire golfing world. Sure. Uh, not just here at Treetops, but across the country. Uh, you here have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars since yep. the beginning of Patriot Weekend. Yep. Part of that is this Patriot shootout that we're going to showcase on the, on the show today, yeah. al along with sharing some powerful stories. So just give us a 60 second recap of how the shootout works. Three flights and then what happens? 60 seconds, you don't know me very well, Bill. <laughs> but, uh, so you, the shootout was a, was a brainchild of mine. Um, this is the 14th year, but we, we haven't had 14 shootouts. I, I had a few years of Patriot Golf Day and then worked into the shootout. And really it's, it's to honor not the person that's here necessarily. I mean, they're, they're gonna have a great weekend, but they all choose to honor somebody um, could be living could be deceased and you know you, you'll see today in the in the stories that they tell after they've won what that person means to them um, and, and three tops is such a great amphitheater and a, such a great venue for a, a horse race style event where one person gets eliminated on every hole and, uh, and it's grown so big there were 71 people this weekend trying to qualify for about 30 spots in the shootout so it, it's gotten huge and it just, we've created different flights and, and different opportunities for people to win and for people to really be showcased and, and play on TV. How about that? Well, and those players raised money. In many cases, they raised money they sure to did, kind yeah. of sponsor their efforts and all that money goes to Folds of Honor. So yep. it's a dual purpose event, which is one of the reasons it's grown into three flights. <laughs> uh, and I love it. It, it. it takes over this course, it takes over this resort. So my last question for you is, why does Treetops do it? I mean, you, you give up a lot of business on this Labor Day weekend to make all this possible. Yeah, I mean, I'm thankful that, that we have fantastic owners that, that believe in causes like this because, yeah, I mean, we, we don't charge much for this. And uh, we probably could be making more revenue this weekend, but, you know, this is just, it's so meaningful. Um, you know, when you see the faces of the, of the people that, that come to play, um, you know, when I'm able to, to read a bio uh, about somebody and they hear uh, some of the reasons, you know, they write it down, but when they can actually hear some of the reasons that they're playing for the person that they chose to play for, uh, it's rewarding. And you saw our staff. Our staff supports this wholeheartedly. You can look at all these displays. That's our maintenance crew that works so hard to get these displays in here. So there's just so many people that, that believe in this cause, and I'm, I'm so blessed to have owners that uh, are right alongside it. It is definitely a full Treetops family effort to put this weekend together. Thanks for letting us kind of be a small part of it. You bet. It's such a powerful feature of Patriot Weekend at Treetops to see the names of fallen heroes painted onto the range. And First Sergeant Dave Rye, some of these names have a special meaning to you, don't they? Yeah, I got uh, four soldiers here that uh, either uh, deployed with or directly underneath me as a First Sergeant in uh, Afghanistan. Um, what does 9-11 mean to you 20 years later? Oof, powerful. I mean, I was, uh, I was out for 14 years, I had 12 years in service, I was out for 14 years, and then when 9-11 uh, happened, uh, I, I decided, man, I gotta get back in. And uh, I went back in. You were out. I was out 14 years. I went back in, uh, I finished out, ended up doing 27 years, three deployments. And yeah, it's, uh, I tell you what, the anniversary, it, it strikes home. So me and, and a lot of soldiers. What are the emotions that roll through you when you think about 2001 and then 2021. Well, 2001, obviously, shock. Everybody was in shock. Uh, now, um, a lot of it's when you see stuff like this, you're somber, uh, you're heartfelt. Um, sometimes you're angry, you know, yeah. and those are some of the emotions that a lot of soldiers lean on each other to really get through the day sometimes. We like to distract ourselves with golf. Oh, yeah. 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 Play, play on three tops or play all over this wonderful resort. And to see this gathering of patriots in the context of golf is really pretty oh, cool. It's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, the emotions that you run through when you're here, I mean, you laugh, you cry, you know, yeah. um, but it's, it's somber. It really is. And then to know that what we're doing here is for a great cause. That's the biggest thing. Mm. I mean, we know that those families that have lost soldiers go through more emotions than maybe most of us, you know, and to help them, that is, that's an honor. It's an honor. Would you do it all over again, same way? Absolutely. Why? Absolutely. Because, you know, to be part of something that's bigger than yourself, I love my country. I love it. 
you know, and I, I do it in a heartbeat. I would. We talked with Kevin McKinley earlier. He's working double duty, both as the organizer of the whole thing and the referee of the civilian flight match. You bet. I want to give everybody at least one shout out. So tell us the players we started with and who now, after their third hole, is still in the fight. Yeah, so uh, the civilians, we kind of uh, put a little trick on them and made them play Devil's Drop right out of For the For their gate. opener. Yeah, that was their opener. <laughs> their so hole number three. three is a little bit challenging. and. Unfortunately, we lost Joseph Newcomb, and uh, my dad actually went out on, on hole dad number Dad didn't get one a family well. exemption? He didn't. He didn't get exempted to the fourth hole. He, he doesn't like three. I think he's been out on three a few times. It just, uh, <laughs> we, we started him there this time. Yeah. So, uh, And then uh, hole four, we also eliminated two uh, individuals there, um, and that was actually a little bit better play. There was only four bogeys, and then everybody else made par on that hole. So the four bogeys had to chip off for one spot to move forward. Somebody goes out every hole. Every hole, yeah. somebody goes out. Uh, so we had uh, three bogeys, three for three for one spot uh, chip off, and we lost Joel Shermer and Ken Little, and uh, Ryan Seaford was actually able to, to survive that chip off with a brilliant one. Actually, hit it to about a foot, and I, I picked a pretty tough one there. And then this hole, uh, we lost a, a familiar face and uh, a past four-time champion, Ryan Munson, got into a wow. little bit of trouble, had a, had a rough lie and, and hit one a little bit over the green on hole number five. And uh, so Ryan Munson bowed out here. And, uh, There's a lot of leaves... people who lost the office pool when that happened. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's like, uh, that's like Duke going out in the first right. round right there. So. Well, we will see you again on number nine as we get down to the finals. We want to bring everybody what it, how this match ends with a civilian flight. And uh, let's take a moment before we go to break, though, and catch up with Ryan Seaford, one of the competitors here in the civilian flight. This event at Treetops draws players from all over, including one from Chicago these days, Ryan Seaford. That's correct. Why did you decide to play in the civilian flight at this event? My dad's been playing in it for many years, and he just tells me how great it is, how fun it is. Uh, it kind of gets the competitive juices flowing, and it's hard uh, playing a game of golf to get those juices. And he says it's an amazing time. Decided to come up and yeah, compete. Get to raise a few dollars for Souls of Honor as well. Absolutely. How'd you do in that regard? Um, I did wonderful. My company, uh, they donated a uh, pretty penny for me. So, nice. Yeah. Uh, Every player in this event is playing on behalf of someone. So, Caddy, turn around. Let's see the back of your bib. You're playing on behalf of Sergeant Glenn Triplett. What does that main name mean to you? It means a lot. My, he was my dad's uncle. Uh, meant a lot to my dad. Uh, he was a great influence on him. Obviously, uh, the good habits and the influence passed down to me from him, so that's what it meant to me. I never actually met him, but um, yeah, it means a lot to him, so it means a lot to me. What's it like being surrounded by all these Patriots? It's incredible, yeah. I mean, it's, it's an incredible weekend. Um, it's actually hard to put into words, just what it feels like. Yeah, well, keep playing well. Yeah, we'll hopefully, hopefully, if you do, we'll see you on number nine Absolutely. for the final pairing. We will continue this very special edition of our program from Treetop, celebrating our nation, looking back 20 years after 9-11 and more when we continue after this. Welcome back into our special edition of the show as we've set up shop at Treetops for this marvelous Patriot Golf Weekend. 20 years after 9-11, love for this country still runs strong and we've got a lot of great stories to share with you as well as coverage of a pretty fun golf tournament they call the Patriot Shootout. In the prior segment, we covered the civilian flight for you, and now Military Flight 1 has been through a few holes. Nick Lewis is the yes, referee for this match. That is correct. What I want to do is make sure everybody gets their name mentioned on TV at least once. Sure. So share with us the field that started okay. Flight 1 and then where we are with just a few holes left. All right, absolutely. Well, first of all, we had seven players to start, and two of them Never made it to the first tee. Early elimination. Early elimination there. So Lou Nichols and Justin Nichols, thanks for qualifying, but you guys never made it out. Must be present to win. Yes, exactly. So other than that, we have John Lucha, Chris Moylan, Billy Riley, Frank Lewis, Ross Smith, Jason Crudoff, and Kevin Garrity. That's how we started. And our first two holes were basically a practice hole because the first two guys got eliminated. So basically the last hole, hole four, was where we really started. And we lost Frank Lewis, unfortunately, on that hole. And this hole, number five, we had a very exciting chip off between 
one, two, three, four, five of the six competitors. So, uh, unfortunately, Ross Smith was eliminated from the chip off and we got five players left. John, Chris, Billy, Jason, and Kevin. The excitement builds. We will see you again on the ninth tee as we get to the, the final matchup for this flight one. It's fun stuff for a great cause, the Folds of Honor Foundation. We'll see you in a bit. Perfect, thanks. This program today is all about saying thank you and honoring those who have served this great nation and raising funds for the family members left behind uh, when our fallen heroes give the ultimate sacrifice. Master Sergeant Joe Newcomb joins me. You've been a part of this treetops event for a number of years. Why do you keep coming back? The um, reason I come back is just, um, first off, when I started out coming here, it was just about come up here and golf, but uh, I didn't know what this was all about. Uh, my son-in-law introduced me to it and uh, got up here and seen what this is all about, about honoring those who served and, and helping the families left behind. And it's, it's just an amazing thing. Uh, very emotional when you come up here. Uh, you feel it within all the uh, you know guys that are up here. Um, camaraderie. You know we're all here for the same purpose, and we all like to have a good time too. So it's a lot of fun. There is something to be said for gathering together, sharing stories, sharing laughs, but also sharing some tears. I would think. Yeah, the first year I came up here, like I was speaking, uh, you know, I originally my son-in-law invited me up here, and I was like, heck yeah, I'll go up there and golf. We got up here and we were at the um, at the uh, banquet and the one lady was telling her story about her husband and um, there wasn't a dry eye at the table, right. including mine. And uh, I was hook, line and sinkered from then on out. And uh, this is just a great thing that they do up here. Kevin McKinley is an amazing man. His, his, his staff is amazing. They do great things. They treat us like kings. And um, I'm just very thankful for, what, for having this opportunity. We stand literally stand amongst the names that have been memorialized on the tee here at Treetops. What does that mean to you? It's very emotional. It's um, when, when you see the names there, it really hits you. Uh, you really, you can see numbers, but in, of course, you know, you feel that too, but when you really see these names down here and you know that that was a person who gave the ultimate sacrifice for you and for all of us to, to live in this great country. Um, it hits pretty heavy. It does. I try to walk these every time and I might not be able to give the attention to every name but I try to think about everyone that served and just thank them for, for what they've done for us. Yeah. And in so many cases, so many of the fallen heroes will point to what happened on 2001, September 11 as a motivating reason for them to begin serving. What does that date mean to you 20 years later? Oh, 20 years later, um, a lot went on. I served during that whole time. I retired in 2013 uh, after 26 and a half years mm. uh, in the Air Force, but I remember that day vividly. Where were you? I was uh, working for the Air Force. Um, actually, to be honest with you, I was building training bombs uh, we're training our pilots. We do that every day. We build these munitions and they go to the ranges and, and they drop them and get proficient. Um, I'll never forget a couple of the guys stopped and went and took a smoke break. And about 30 minutes later, um, one of the guys came over and said, you got to come see this. You got you to come over and stop what you're doing. Uh, so I did. Uh, went over and walked in the office and the TV was on and that's when the second airplane hit the tower. And uh, I just looked at everybody and I said, Pack your bags, we're gone. And within a month, our unit was over there. Wow. Yep. This 20th anniversary of 9-11 means so many things to so many different people. And for our military heroes, it has a special connection to them. Master Sergeant Todd York, how are you, sir? Very good, sir. It is good to see you. And um, what does 9-11 mean to you? What was happening in your life 20 years ago? Well, 9-11, I joined the service in 88. And then I got out after my four years, was done, went to college. Was in my office doing my job on 9-11, saw the towers fall. 33 years old, I went back re-enlisted without a thought, without telling the family, and I've been in ever since. So I'm still in today. So I served my country once and I felt I needed to do it again. What was it about that event that triggered that response from you? I felt I had the training, I had the experience through Desert Storm. 
and it took me back. It wasn't even a thought. What was the immediate aftermath like uh, of that time, of those next few months, and maybe even those next couple of years in your world? What did that look like? Well, my first day was a deployment drill. I didn't know it was a drill. So my first day back, I had my sea bag. I had to go through, sign my will, power of attorney, make sure I had all my uniforms, call the wife, tell her I'm going on day one, and then realized it was a drill. And then after that, it was just, what can I do, where can I go? Is this your wife right over here? This is my wife right here. Come on up here for a second. I'm Bill. Hi, Bill. Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Now, this guy a couple of times has invoked your name by saying he didn't tell you he was re-enlisting. And he just, then he called and told you he had to go. So we were talking about the family members associated with servicemen and women. What was your reaction to all that? It was, um, you know, it's a little difficult when you know that someone's going away and risking their lives every, every day. So, Did you give him a hard time? I mean, it's okay. It's just between us. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't think I ever give him a hard time about it. I mean, generally speaking, you'd probably let your spouse know a couple days in advance before it was time to go. You just gave her the old, I'm out of here? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the military service can often be, though, right? It's, it's I got to go. Absolutely. And I've been going ever since. First year this year that I didn't go away for six months. We'll get back to more powerful stories and the golf itself in a moment. But first, over the last several years, this guy has messed with my head to a degree that I've decided to bring in two lovely assistants to be on the receiving end of what the Jolly Jester pulls off here in his bag of tricks. So our audio technician and director of sustenance and nutrition, Miles Hall, and our senior director of the junior team, Sean Irish, they're all yours, boss. Take it away. All righty. Here's what we'll do here to follow the protocols because magic we have you know just unions and things we have to do these things so anyway i will just play safe for everybody uh we'll start off with you just pick out a card for us just grab one you like here pull out a card just go ahead and grab one just grab one now look at it show these guys show the camera real quick and then wave it a little bit and this is this mask has saved my life you know I, you know, can't make light of covid you should wear the mask vaccinate or at least just be smart and be healthy. But that has saved me, because if you show that again towards the camera, and if you look right here, you see how the mask will kind of just protect you like that. Wait, what? <laughs> see how it just kind of, it's really saved me. So it's been fantastic for that. But I'm actually <laughs> going to show you something else here you might not like. What I want Your you turn, to Sean. do, cut the cards towards him. Just cut the cards yeah. towards him. Put them flat on his hand and we'll mark it just like this. Now, you're working with the big boss here, so we're gonna team you up. Okay, you get back in. in the picture yeah. here. So you're basically just a table. <laughs> if you look right here, you take the bottom card, you cut the top card towards you, take the top card yeah. right there. Yeah. Now, here's what happens, is if everything works correctly. It usually does. Uh, yours is actually gonna help us tell what his card is. Did you get a good card? Yeah. Let's see, let's see, I, you can show me. Oh, look at that. The ace of spades, hold that like this. Now normally this works as a twinning type thing. You know, like the two would be similar, like a two of diamonds and a two of hearts or a four of spades and a four of clubs. You We're gonna need another hour for this week's You show. did not get the ace of clubs, did you? No. All right, but if you look at this, if you read that right there, what does that say under the ace? I think the ace tells us that you picked a spade. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now read that, read that out for us. Read that, what does that say? The United? The United States Playing Card Company, made in the USA. If you can zoom in, I don't know if you're able to do that, but it, what does it say in the fine print? Can you guys read that? Fine print. I know you picked the seven of spades. And it's what? right there in the fine print. Show oh, it to geez. the camera. And there it is right there. I know you picked the seven of spades. It's always fun to be in Michigan and great charity, the Folds of Honors. Nice He's to meet you guys. done it again. <laughs> There are so many powerful stories at Treetops this 20th anniversary after 9-11, and one of them comes to us from Marine Corporal Christopher Moylan. How are you, man? How are you? Good. How's the game? I mean, let's talk about the stuff that doesn't matter as much first. <laughs> yes. The uh, game's been rough. I haven't been able to get out as much. Had a baby, so that's taken away some golf time, but came out, shot 29 on Treetops today, so it's getting there. It's All right. getting better. On a, a, a par 27, you're only two yeah. over. That's yeah. pretty solid. Uh, what were the years of your service? Uh, 2009 to 2013. 
Okay, so as we as we now look back on 20 years after 9-11, you were just a kid yep, when that grade. happened. So what do you remember about it? I remember actually getting yelled at in school <laughs> about it. Um, a friend of mine found out that her father was on a plane to New York, wasn't on one of the planes that crashed into the towers. Um, and then I mentioned, I brought it up and teacher me saying, hey, don't talk about it, all this other stuff. But I remember getting home and just watching the news for hours and end with my family and just the nonstop of the plane, just going in the towers over and over and over and over. What was it that led to you deciding to join and to serve as a Marine? Well, uh, that part of it was being angry, you know, having that happen to our country. And then uh, I had a teacher in high school, uh, Mr. Barnes, had a big influence on my life and he was in the Marine Corps during Vietnam, so he was a big reason that I joined. Hmm. So. You and I are standing in front of all of these names that are painted on the range of treetops. Um, when you see that, hmm. what, does, what does that do to your heart? It melts it, to be honest with you, knowing that they, they sacrificed everything, the time with their family, having family possibly, just having them sacrifice their lives so we could be here, like in this great country that we live in. Hmm. So. Now as a new dad, Yes. You know, you've got these other layers of concern and things that touch your heart, and I'm guessing protecting that little baby is one of them. Yes, absolutely. The little girl is my life, so I'll um, do anything. You've got something special on yes. your wrist here. Absolutely. Staff Sergeant Louis F. Cardine. F. Cardine, 2016 Iraq, KIA. Tell us about this tribute. Uh, from my knowledge, uh, from what I remember, I served with him briefly right before I got out of the Marine Corps. Um, and then after I got out, um, a unit was deployed back to Iraq to fight ISIS. And if I remember correctly from my knowledge, he was a ser first service member killed by ISIS when they took back over from Iraq. There are undoubtedly some veterans watching. Yes. And some of them are struggling. Mm -hmm. They're wondering if they've been remembered. They're wondering if they mattered, if their service mattered, their sacrifice mattered. What do you want to say to those veterans that are watching us uh, 20 years after 9-11? You do matter and you will always matter. I don't care what anybody says or how you feel. You will matter. You matter to our country. You matter to all of us here. Um, there's always help out there. If you're having issues, talk about it. That's the biggest thing I've done is I know a lot of people hold it in because they, they, people can't relate. But for me personally, it's worked just to talk about it, whether it doesn't matter who, because it gets it off your chest. And that's helped me out. So talk to you about anybody. Just get it out. I told you there were some powerful stories involved in this special episode of our program. But we do need to include golf at some point. So when we come back, we will present to you the final winning moments for all three flights here at the Patriot Shootout at Treetops. Don't go anywhere. We're back on number 9T after this. Welcome back to the final few moments of this special edition of our program as we celebrate Patriot Weekend at Treetops having some fun, telling some powerful stories, and raising tens of thousands of dollars for the Folds of Honor Foundation. And mixed into all this, there's actually a golf tournament taking place. So we are now on the ninth tee with our civilian group. Kevin McKinley, introduce our final competitors. Yeah, we got uh, Josh Hopkins here. We got Robert Fisher over there. They've uh, survived and advanced. And, nice. Uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't totally stellar throughout, but uh, like I said, they survived in advance. They hit some great shots and and uh, here, gotta, they, here they stand. All you, you just gotta have do to is advance. keep going. Josh, That's where's right. home for you? Coldwater, Michigan. And Robert? Catawba Island, Ohio. And what is it that brought you to play in this event? A uh, good buddy of mine, uh, we've been up here a couple times. This will be my second time with him. Uh, just great camaraderie and uh, great time overall. Yeah, how about you? Second time up also, uh, my friend's a veteran, and between him and my dad, that's why I'm out here. It means a lot, doesn't it? Yep. Playing a special event for a, a cause that's greater than just golf. Absolutely. Well, we wish you both the best on this ninth hole. There will be a winner determined at yeah. one point, so uh, play well. Josh Hopkins just said a moment ago his heart was really racing here as it all came down to that final pot. It did. And? What, uh, what's that experience like? What are the butterflies doing? I don't really have words for it right now. Uh, my chest is beating out of my, my heart's beating out your of my chest. Your chest is beating out of your heart. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you're nervous if that's how it's oh, happening. Yeah. Who'd you play in honor of today? Uh, a good buddy's uh, aunt, 
Diane, a lieutenant colonel, retired Diane Price. Yes. Very cool. Well, Kevin McKinley, step in here with some hardware. Yeah, how about that? We got the uh, Eagle Trophy, the traditional nice. Eagle Trophy. In addition to this, your name will go on that trophy along with Lieutenant Colonel Price's. So awesome. congratulations. Thank you. Well played. Thank you, sir. You got it. Thank you. Our 2021 civilian flight champion, Josh Hopkins. Well done, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's time for the final hole of military flight one. Nick Lewis, we saw you a few minutes ago with the leaderboard update. Now we're down to two, so That's introduce right. our finalists. All right, we got two great finalists here. We got Bill Riley and we got Jason Krutoff. Krutoff? Krutoff. Jason Krutoff. <laughs> and caddies as well. Now, I know it was a little bit of a limp down the stretch there because the eighth hole gave everybody quite a test. But um, what does it mean to you, Billy, to be where you are right now in this tournament? Uh, I mean, just what it stands for and everything that uh, Kevin McKinley and Treetops does for uh, for the veterans between the military league, between this event, this tournament this weekend, uh, stand to honor, uh, support in the Folds of Honor, which is a really, uh, really near and dear charity for me. Yeah, for so, sure. yeah, it's just, it's awesome to be able to come back every year. It was a little longer trip this year from Phoenix, but uh, I'll be coming back every year. This is just an amazing event. And whose name is on the back of that caddy bib? It's uh, Randall Riley. It's my great uncle. He uh, fought in Korea from 51 mm -hmm. to 54. And then after that, he wound up uh, flying for the National Guard and the Air Force for a while after that. So family tradition being honored. Absolutely. Jason, who are you playing in honor of? I'm playing for my grandfather this year, Bern Duma. Uh, he was in the Coast Guard during the Korean conflict as well. Um, he passed away last year last fall battle with cancer as well so um, no it's great usually uh, i play for my buddy daniel harvey um we were able to sponsor two teams this year and unfortunately dan's team got knocked out but hopefully we can bring home the uh w for burn well it's a great cause thank you all for your service and play well here on number nine we'll all be watching thank you a pretty dramatic ending to the military flight one championship. Bill Riley all the way up from Phoenix, Arizona. Now it feels like a trip maybe worth making. Congratulations. Oh, I'll be coming back every year. <laughs> okay, a few butterflies on number nine, maybe? Uh, uh, maybe a little. This is my third year playing in this, and this is my third year making it to number nine. Nice. So the last two years I finished second to two very deserving champions, and uh, this year I was able to get it done. I didn't think so for a second there. Jason about chipped in, yes. chipped in to cut me for par. I was like, <laughs> I saw that ball rolling at the hole and it was dead center. I just, I can't believe that thing stayed out. That was such a good shot. Well, third time's the charm. You've got some hardware, Nick. Go ahead and present right, our champion. Present our A-Flight Patriot Day shootout champion, Bill Riley. Congratulations, Thank Bill. Thank you very much, sir. There you Appreciate go, man. Appreciate it. Well done. What's it mean to you to win this and be a part of this event? Oh, I've been looking at this trophy for a couple years now and yeah. it's going to look good sitting on the mantle. Be a good story to tell everybody back in Arizona. Congratulations. Absolutely. Yeah, Thank you very it. much. Thanks much. It was a pleasure. We've got one more flight to go in our military division. Before we get to flight two, we've got one more special story to share with you. This special Labor Day weekend gathering at Treetops, if you really trace it back to its roots, doesn't happen without the family sacrifice of the Bucklands. And we have had the opportunity over a lot of years to talk with Buck and his wife about what Folds of Honor means. And um, so as we gather this 20th anniversary of 9-11, I have to think there are more than a handful of emotions going through Buck Buckland. There's a lot of emotions. Uh, unfortunately, uh, not so positive. Yeah. And I think that any of us that have been in the military, I think all military people uh, are really patriots of the country. And we'd like to believe we really do things what, that's right for the people and the other nations that we try to help. And uh, this just doesn't come off mm. as something that we can be proud of. We do come off proud though of the gathering and the support of the families of fallen heroes. And this Folds of Honor Foundation gets its start because of the loss of your son. I mean, it's sad to say, but that's reality of it. So these many years later of that, what's it like for you to see this gathering of patriots at Treetops? I think what it does for me is 
uh, you know, we don't want any of our people that have been lost to be forgotten. So my son's certainly not forgotten, and uh, it provides a tremendous legacy to other members of the armed forces, which can't be there to support their family either. Mm. So the Foles of Honor, I just can't think of anything more worthy or important than supporting our children. And that's what it's all about. And I think that this is what this event's all about, is supporting the military and what they've done for the nation. So it just makes me proud to be a member of the nation, and it makes me proud to be ex-military, and it makes me very proud to be here mm. in this environment. We have one more championship moment to share with you as we come to the second military flight of this Patriot shootout. Mark Hogan has been the referee of this match since it started, and we haven't seen you in a while, so bring us up to speed. <laughs> Who are our finalists? Hey, we've had some great, uh, great play. All these guys are outstanding play. We've got Dave Bortles, who's done an outstanding job and making lots of pars. We've got Scott Morton as well, who's been on the green. We've only had two chip-offs the whole uh, eight holes so far. That kind of uh, exemplifies what these guys have been playing today. So they've been on it, they've been making pars and putts, and here they are, finalists. Dave, where's home for you? Parma, Michigan. All right, and in whose honor are you playing? We're, uh, we're playing for uh, my battle buddy, his grandpa. We fought in Afghanistan together. Mm. and. All right. We're playing for his grandpa this year. Man, oh man. Thank you. Powerful family connections and all those uh, all those thoughts going through. Are you nervous at all here on the ninth tee? I'm no nervous now than I was in the beginning. So <laughs> just riding this thing just out. It's been one high level the whole just, way through. Just trying to stay on my game and yeah. see what we can do. Scott, where's home for you? Uh, I'm in Kentwood, Michigan. It's right outside of Grand Rapids. And in whose honor are you playing? I'm playing for Staff Sergeant Andrew Seif. It's my chiropractor's nephew who died in a training mission over the Gulf of Mexico in oh 2015. Goodness. And what really moved me to play for him, he's buried in uh, Arlington National Cemetery mm. with his three brothers. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Three brothers, so the sacrifice that that family, yeah. is, I, I felt honored to play in this. My goodness. Well, that's why we're here, that's why we're doing this. But we do turn our attention to golf for a couple of moments, so play well here on number nine. We'll see you up in the green. All right, thank you. thanks. Thanks, right, thanks, thanks Bill. So our flight two winner in the military division, Dave Bortles, you, you had that wonderful feeling of having two putts to win. <laughs> how'd, that, how'd that treat the heart rate? Oh, Al, yeah. that two putt to win, that, that ain't gonna get you a win. I mean, you gotta, <laughs> cause then you're putting three, so. Right. Yeah, I, I kinda stayed steady Eddie the whole time and felt good. Well, we've got some hardware for you, Mark Hogan, go ahead. All right, Dave, hey, great playing on behalf of Tree Tops. Patriot Golf Day shootout. Congratulations on your win today. It's Thank fun. You, sir. It was fun being out there with you and fun being part of your big win. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I've got a question for your caddy. This is an honor of Grandpa, right? Yeah. So what's it mean to you? Uh, so Dave and I are both infantrymen, both CIBs, right? Um, my grandpa was the same thing, brown star and purple heart. So lost him to diabetes, unfortunately. But we've been playing for the last three years. We've been playing for people we lost side by side, you know, and. I mean, her name, Kevin still puts her name up there. Um, we were together when she passed overseas. So this one's not only for Papa, this one's for Sean, this one's for Zana. For Zana. Yeah. This one's for everybody in OEF 10, 11 that we shouldn't have been there, but we were. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, awesome. and it's so cool to see you honor family members and others that you care about. Thank you, sir. Well done. Now that is a powerful collection of patriotism, of heroes, of stories. And I'm gonna guess that one moment or another, perhaps a tear came to your eye. I know it did to mine. We're so thankful for those who have served this country and allow us the freedom to do things like make birdies and bogeys and care about it, right? And so now is your opportunity to do something to help those family members who are left behind. Go online to foldsofhonor.org and make a donation that says thank you, that says we appreciate you, that says you matter and we don't want any of you to be forgotten. We appreciate you watching this program, this special edition, and we appreciate Treetops for dedicating their entire resort to this very special event. So now do your part. Say thank you to those who have served this great country even 20 years after what happened on 9-11. We'll see you next time.